This is Bloomberg Crypto, a daily Bloomberg iHeart podcast. I'm Valdana Hayrik, in for Stacey Marie Ishmael. It's Tuesday, November 22nd. Before chaos erupted in the cryptocurrency space following the collapse of the FTX cryptocurrencies exchange, digital asset researcher CryptoCompare found that Bitcoin's value for this year wasn't done declining. It appeared that the crypto coin was headed not just into a winter, but a possible crypto ice age. The data provider reviewed stats from past downturns, finding that Bitcoin, the largest digital currency by market value, could continue declining into year end. And then, of course, a series of previously unthinkable events, with news surfacing that crypto's second leading exchange, FTX, halted withdrawals, declared bankruptcy, and had its CEO, Sam Bankman-Fried, resign. And this stunning downfall sparked a whole new, wide-ranging market downturn, with Bitcoin falling below $17,000 a coin, down from $69,000 just a year ago. And as the digital assets industry continues to adapt to this new post-FTX reality, what will it all mean for Bitcoin's value? Joining us now is Bloomberg reporter Olga Karif. I think a lot of people are still building and, and hopeful that this is sort of a temporary setback. So, Olga, something that you and I have been talking about for a really long time, actually, we talked about it even back in 2018, is the crypto winter, which a lot of people are familiar with. But now we have so many events within the crypto space impacting crypto prices. And I want to ask you about what all is going on that's helping to create this, maybe we can call it this crypto ice age. Sure. So so it's a confluence of two factors. One is macroeconomic sort of environmental factors, uh, the Fed increasing interest rates uh, that pushes investors away from uh, risk assets like cryptocurrencies. This is what essentially impacted crypto prices earlier this year. And then later this year, we just saw a cascade of essentially crypto company bankruptcies where a lot of these companies made risky bets that didn't turn out right in the environment of falling crypto prices. And so we saw bankruptcies of companies ranging from hedge fund Three Arrows Capital to uh, lender Celsius Network to just this month FTX crypto exchange. So just to speak to the crazy nature of the last couple of days, the FTX implosion and everything that's happening in the wake of that, that really is helping to spur this humongous plunge in crypto prices and is is helping create this ice age, right? Absolutely. It's been, you know, even people who've been in crypto for all these years, they say that this is sort of the biggest implosion, the biggest scandal in crypto, if you will, that they've ever seen or experienced. So it just sent shockwaves through investors new to crypto, as well as loan timers who've seen a lot of bad things happen in this industry, but even they are shocked and and just, you know, hugely impacted by what happened. Dismayed by everything that happened. Yeah. You and I wrote this story that said, Earlier Bitcoin bear markets show that its price might not have hit bottom. We wrote this a couple days ago, which in the crypto sphere feels like a hundred years, maybe <laughs> the way <laughs> things have been developing the last couple of days. But can you talk just a little bit more about how within the crypto sphere, because we don't really have a lot of fundamentals to be looking at, right, in terms of prices for different coins. So what traders tend to do is they're looking at charts, they're looking at technical levels, and they're looking at historical data and what's happened during past drawdowns, right, to sort of come to these conclusions about whether or not the worst is behind us. Right. And basically what happens during bear markets is that traders rush out of a lot of this uh, so-called altcoins, you know, coins that are not Bitcoin, and either get out of the market completely or seek uh, safety in Bitcoin. And so it's very helpful to see sort of what happens with Bitcoin in the bear markets to just figure out 
have we reached bottom or not yet? And Crypto Compare did just that. And they looked at the downturns that started in 2013 and 2018 or 17, late 2017. And basically what they found was that in both of these downturns, Bitcoin's price dropped by more than 80%. And sort of before FTX collapsed, what Crypto Compare found was that, you know, so far this crypto winter, Bitcoin is down by 70 something percent. And so Crypto Compare argued that that means that sort of it's not over yet. Uh, we could see other declines, particularly if they're triggered by sort of major macro events. And of course, <laughs> since that report came out, FTX uh, crypto exchange filed for bankruptcy. So that definitely triggered uh, further declines in Bitcoin prices. And I want to go back to a point that you were making about institutions and how they'd been involved, because a big narrative that you and I have been writing about over the last maybe two years or so is that institutions were stepping in and becoming more interested in the crypto space, especially as prices were skyrocketing in 2021. But can you talk a, a bit more about that sort of hit to reputation or hit to trust that we're going through right now and experiencing right now and what it means for institutional investments and how much more hesitant maybe they're telling you they are about being in the space or, or being involved in the space in any way? So uh, I think it's really crucial what, what you mentioned there in terms of institutions losing trust in crypto. I think that has happened, especially over the last week and a half when FTX um, went belly up, uh, potentially, you know, misusing uh, customer funds. Uh, basically, FTX was the, the darling uh, of Wall Street because its founder, Sam Bankman-Fried, he worked as a trader on Jane Street, so he spoke Wall Street's language. People felt very comfortable with him, uh, you know, <laughs> being on this exchange and a lot of institutions held accounts on FTX crypto exchange and now their money is stuck on the exchange and they don't know when or whether they will get this money back. So a lot of large institutional investors got hurt by simply, you know, having had a relationship with FTX. But more importantly, I think a lot of institutions are becoming uh, very much more cautious about stepping into crypto. It's been pretty much, uh, prices have been moving down, 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 and it's not clear that we are at the bottom yet. And it's very risky from many institutions' standpoint to step into the space when we don't even have a full picture of the fallout from FTX's bankruptcy. So I think institutions are increasingly doing more due diligence or hoping to start to do that more, you know, after seeing even sort of well-regarded firms like FTX going bankrupt and apparently sort of not maybe doing everything the way they were supposed to. And so most people in crypto who interact with institutions say that they expect that institutional investors will take a breather and kind of step back from investing in crypto for, for a while. And the other side of this, obviously, is retail investors. And you and I wrote about in, in the story that we were just talking about how retail investors really, even before the FTX implosion and some of the other events that we've seen happen over the last couple of days, retail investors really were scaling back their involvement in the space. Whereas in 2020 and 2021, you had a lot of retail investors being very excited by the price returns that we were seeing in the crypto space. And they were stepping in and spending stimulus checks, their stimmy checks, some of them on uh, cryptocurrencies and other sort of speculative and risky bets. So how important is the retail investor to the space? And this is a question I also have been asking a lot of people I speak with. Their involvement is so pertinent to this space, right? And, and a lot of them have been getting hurt, not just by the implosions earlier in the year, but also with what's going on with FTX. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, in general, during uh, crypto bear markets, uh, as we both know, you know, retail investors pull back, pull out of the market. That's why crypto exchanges generally see much lower revenues, if, if any revenues at all, or profits rather from, you know, on the years of the bear markets. 
retail investors sort of stay on the sidelines. They don't want to trade very much. What we could see from FTX's demise is, is so many retail investors got hurt. A lot of them have lost trust in crypto and sort of crypto-related infrastructure. And so they might stay on the sidelines for a while. But again, I feel like for both types of investors, retail and institutional, you know, if there is some sort of a price action where prices actually start going up again, you know, I suspect that we'll see both of these types of investors jumping right back in because we've had catastrophes in, in, in crypto before back in 2014. Of course, crypto was much smaller back then. The world's biggest uh, Bitcoin exchange, uh, Mt. Gox, you know, went bankrupt and it sent shockwaves throughout the crypto industry. But, you know, some months later, people got back into crypto or new people came into crypto and this was forgotten. And I suspect the same will happen here as well. Up next, more with Bloomberg reporter Olga Karif on whether Bitcoin's winter might turn into a crypto ice age. Just to go back to your point about altcoins, you mentioned altcoins earlier and how much more they tend to get hit during these drawdowns. This is something that we tend to see happen, right? Where smaller coins or less well-known coins or coins basically that just aren't Bitcoin <laughs> tend to suffer to a greater degree than Bitcoin itself does. Absolutely. And, and I think that makes sense. They tend to be riskier uh, to begin with because fewer people hold them. So price moves can be more uh, severe in one direction or, or another. During uh, bull markets, uh, you know, you can make more money potentially in altcoins. But of course, during bear markets, a lot of this coins actually go into the zombie mode where they're not trading at all. Uh, I mean, thousands of coins uh, became zombies this year alone, actually the most coins ever. Yeah, you um, had a great story on this. Thank you. Uh, and so so I think people perceive all of crypto to be very risky right now, and especially altcoins. And maybe we can end possibly on a more hopeful note, but what do crypto people and people who are involved in this space, what do they have to tell you when you are asking them about the future and what's next as you said, we still have yet to see everything that happens in, in the wake of the FTX fallout. But once we're past all of that, what are people within the space expecting to see? Well, I think on a more hopeful note, uh, a lot of people say that all of these catastrophes that happened this year basically are going to possibly speed up uh, additional laws and regulations that will make it uh, completely clear what you can and cannot do in crypto or, or will make it cl more clear than it is today, rather. And uh, essentially, additional regulation will help legitimize this industry, you know, in the coming months, once it's uh, this groundwork is uh, laid out. And, you know, a lot of people are still building. They believe that maybe uh, FTXs, uh, bankruptcy will push more people to look more at uh, decentralized finance applications, which allow people to trade, borrow and lend without intermediaries, uh, without centralized parties. I think a lot of people are still building and, and hopeful that this is sort of a temporary setback. But again, the question is how temporary? It could be a while. Thank you so much, Olga, for joining us and for all your insight. And also, thank you so much for all the great reporting you've been doing on crypto markets and everything that's been going on with the FTX fallout. Right back at you. You've, uh, you've been doing amazing stories and, and I, I got a chance to do a few of the stories together with you, which was really fun. And, and thank you so yeah, much for having me. You. I'm blushing uh, for anybody who can't <laughs> see us, which is everybody. <laughs> thank you, Olga. <laughs> thank you. You can find more of Olga's reporting on the Bloomberg Terminal and on Bloomberg.com. And for more, be sure to check out our twice-weekly newsletter, Bloomberg Crypto.
This is Bloomberg Crypto, a daily podcast from Bloomberg and iHeartRadio. For more shows from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Send us your comments, questions, or suggestions for the show to crypto at Bloomberg.net. The supervising producer of Bloomberg Crypto is Vicky Vergolina. Our senior producer is Janet Babin. Our producers are Mohamed Farouk and Sharon Bariro. Our associate producers are Ty Butler and Moses Undam. Desta Wonderad is our engineer. Original music by Leo Sidron. I'm Stacey Marie Ishmael. We'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> 